Good to have you here. Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. I think we probably have everyone who's going to attend um, with a handful of people from Serverless Inc. So <laughs> I think we're about half the group here, um, but we're, we're very interested in this. We're doing a lot, of, uh, a lot of work around this already. So it'll be good to get some clarity around the Cloud Events SDK. Uh, Nick, I don't think we've had the pleasure of meeting before. What, what company are you with? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm with uh, VMware. I'm, uh, I stepped in for Carol. Ah. He went on paternity leave. Uh, yep, okay. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, here's where we left off last time. Um, in these conversations, we put together uh, various initiatives, things we'd like to address within the SDK, various scopes of work. Uh, then we prioritized all of these. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that it's easier, easier to follow along. <clears throat> Let me know when you can see this. Yep, I see it. OK, great. Um, so we put together a list of initiatives, various things we want Cloud Event, the Cloud Events SDK to do. And then we prioritize those by order of importance. Um, and from this list of initiatives, then we drafted up a roadmap based on uh, various Cloud Events SDK versions. And we fit these initiatives directly into this roadmap right here. So um, real quick, I, I, I think a lot of the people who are on this call weren't in those previous conversations. Um, and given it's been a little while since we drafted these initiatives, I'm wondering if anyone has any comments or questions about, about these as they are written right now. Doesn't sound like there are any. Um, then let's go ahead and look at the Cloud Events version 0 0.1. And uh, here's where we decided were priorities first and foremost. Um, and again, if you have any questions or comments on, on these, just, uh, just speak up. Uh, so what we're going for is we want to initially support at least three languages. Um, there are a handful of people who volunteered for this. Uh, Matthias, I think, uh, uh, yeah, he's from Red Hat. Uh, his team wanted to work on the Java implementation. Um, Carol and Mark Peak from VMware uh, volunteered to work on the Go implementation. Our company volunteered to work on the JavaScript Node.js implementation. And then a gentleman named William, who hadn't attended these calls but has been working behind the scenes on a Cloud Events SDK, wanted to continue working on uh, the Python version. Um, so we'd like to have at least three versions. And given if these people are still on board to um, to contribute some work. Uh, hopefully we'll have about four. Um, and then the first thing we want this, uh, this SDK to do is instantiate Cloud Events easily in code per the current Cloud Events specification. Um, and this would be almost kind of like a, a class-based system, um, at least in languages that support that, where you could easily create a new Cloud Event and it already has same defaults in it. Uh, and you could simply shape it very easily uh, to put in your custom metadata. Uh, as well as your event payload. And I have some examples of that below, but first I'm gonna go through all these briefly. Uh, next step was to design a versioning system which can handle multiple versions of the Cloud Event specification. Um, you know, we have, we have a few different moving parts here that all have different versions, which we have to consider. Um, and that is the SDK and the specification first and foremost. So what we were thinking here is to practice uh, semantic version, versioning uh, with the major, um, uh, the major number for incompatible API changes, the minor number when we add in functionality in a backwards compatible manner, um, and add in support for additional versions of the Cloud Event specification. Uh, so the goal was when you actually instantiate the SDK, you specify the Cloud Event specification um, right at the right when you first configure it, and the Cloud Event and the Cloud Event SDK should be able to work with multiple specs. Um, and then lastly, patching whenever we make backwards compatible bug fixes. So this is how we were thinking about handling the SDK and the specification, specification versioning issues as of right now. However, there's still some other issues around um, the uh, transport specifications and how we're going to handle that. Uh, and then lastly, support for extensions. Um, you know, we feel that extensions are at the core of building community around cloud events. This is a place for vendors, open source communities, and end users to plug in specific uh, information into the cloud event envelope 
um, so that they can use it more easily. And we think that experience should be baked into the SDK. Uh, there's a bit of confusion as to what the fate of extensions was going to be. Um, but now that we know what that's going to look like, we, uh, we also want to consider first class support for extensions within SDK uh, from day one. And it's my personal hypothesis that we could actually use Cloud Events SDK uh, extensions in the SDK if there's a concept that would allow inheriting other libraries or importing other. Um, other code modules into the Cloud Events SDK as extensions, um, this could be a solution to supporting different uh, transport specifications and perhaps handling some of our versioning issues there. Um, so just putting that out there for thought, but this was, this was what we scoped out for version 0 0.1 of the SDK. Um, does anyone have any questions, comments, or thoughts on these? Yeah, so are you assuming that the, at least for the major version numbers that uh, the SDK itself will sort of have a single version number for all the various languages. So for example, what if say the Go version makes an API incompatible change for some reason, but the other, the other ones do not. Uh, how, how do you see that being handled? Hmm. Um, I, I believe it sounds reasonable to assume that each one of these things should, should perhaps be versioned separately. Um, and given the cloud events specification version itself isn't really related to this versioning, you're actually specifying it at the beginning of the SDK or whatever you configure the SDK. I think we should be okay in allowing these things to be versioned separately. Okay. Yeah. But that, that was my assumption as well. So just to be clear. So each, each language specific SDK has its own versioning and the versioning number is not necessarily tied to the cloud event version number. They are, they're, all, they're both versioned independently as well. Sound right? That sounds right to me. Uh, I'm, yeah, okay. I'm concerned with all these moving parts that if we, if we interconnect the versioning somehow or intertwine them, it could create a bit of a mess or like a blocking situation. Yep, I agree. Okay, cool, just wanna double check, thank you. Also, maybe we want to call this out in the actual uh, document itself somewhere where we can kind of decide on things uh, or at least these types of decisions that we've made and specifically call out why. Um, <clears throat> documenting the why, always a great suggestion. Thanks, Brian. Sure. Um, so I'll put that in here uh, at this time. Leave. Um, Specification and separately from each other. I'm going to refine that later. Um, but okay, great. Any other comments on the scope for Cloud Events SDK version 0.1? Okay, pretty quiet group. Um, just to go over version 0 0.2 real quick so we know where we're heading next with this is to actually assemble, um, be able to assemble cloud events that are coming from various transports and, and encodings. Um, and we're not sure how we're gonna do this yet. Um, this, is, uh, this is why we kind of punted on this a bit to 0 0.2. Um, and we're kind of waiting for some of these specifications to, to mature a bit. Uh, and then after that was to be able to instantiate cloud events easily via event schemas. So being able to um, have an SDK method to easily create a new cloud event by and, and while allowing for just dropping in like a JSON schema or something. Um, anyway, that's coming up next, but that's a, a little ways out. I think these are good first steps for us and uh, just getting this done alone will probably enable cloud events to be used a lot more easily by end users. So that said, um, <clears throat> we have a few people working on implementations. Doesn't sound like any of those people are here on the call unless, um, is anyone on the call uh, planning to actually volunteer or contribute? Um, so SDK? this is Nick. Um, I've been working on the Go version of the SDK. Oh, great. Uh, and I think for me, the only thing that that's uh, a thorn in my side at the moment is the fact that um, the the default um, kind of server HTTP implementations in Go um, mangle the headers, right? There is the, he the, the 
HTTP headers are supposed to be case insensitive. So it essentially assumes that and uh, canonicalizes is what they call it, um, the headers, which means <clears throat> uh, there's a particular issue with um, extension uh, headers. Um, so anything that's unknown in the spec, um, I can't properly case the uh, um, uh, uh, the properties within the within the JSON or whatever. So if I get, for instance, the HTTP uh, binary encoded uh, um, cloud event, uh, the headers that I get from that, for, for all of the, the known properties, I can make the determination just lowercase everything and compare against that. But if there's any extensions, um, there's no way for me to know how they had cased those. So for in the JSON, if I were to do a, a, a you know, change this to the JSON encoding, um, I wouldn't be able to properly case those um, for whoever's going to consume it down the line. So that's the biggest problem that I'm currently uh, dealing with is that I can't, I don't know how to deal with uh, extensions and their, their property names. Are, you, are, the, are you trying to map them to properties within the, the struct that's, that, the, that the JSON is being parsed into, or are you just trying to place it into a, a, a map? So at the moment, I'm just placing everything into a map and assuming that all of the keys are just uh, lowercase anyway. It's when I want to then take that and produce a new um, cloud event to send on the wire, if it's supposed to be a, a, you know, a JSON one, um, and they, the, whoever wrote the, uh, um, the extension property in the first place had it, you know, intended it to be camel case. Um, I've, before I even got to that point, I've lost that information. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that there is a, uh, an issue uh, in the, uh, the spec uh, repo um, that talks about this and it kind of, I think it got lost in the discussion of extensions in general, um, uh, but um, it would be good to perhaps bring that one up with the, the larger group. Um, yeah, I'll have to play around with that because I, 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 I'm pretty sure I've dealt with this in some of my playing around with this stuff. I can't remember how I did it offhand. I'll take a look at it. Mm -hmm. well, I, mean, I think that just the bigger uh, issue in general is that headers are supposed to be case insensitive. Um, so uh, I don't know if maybe a proxy would get in the middle and, uh, you know, change all of the headers to lowercase or, you know, there's any number of things could happen with those because they're not defined as, um, you know, in, in the HTTP spec, they're not defined as case sensitive, um, uh, which just makes it a little bit hard to assume that we're getting, uh, you know, assume that our keys for these extensions will be case sensitive. Um, uh, it makes it just a little bit difficult to actually implement. Yeah, it sounds like we probably can't influence that much in the SDK group. And that's something we got to take up with the, um, that's an issue we have to file with the HTTP specification. Right, right. Doug? There is an issue and uh, I can uh, okay. uh, link it. I mean, something we could do in the, the SDK, though, is that in the event that these are uh, case insensitive, is to you know, auto format before sending over to uh, you know, the HTTP uh, protocol. So we could you know, uh, provide whatever the guidance is or, or implement you know, the, uh, you know, the setting everything to lowercase, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yep, great suggestion. Let me write a quick note about that. Um, just curious, Nick, what is uh, what is your SDK doing right now exactly? Um, <clears throat> so at the moment, it's um, reading into um, uh, a struct and then using a separate map for any 
<clears throat> any parameter or any property that's not known, right? So if it's not event type or event time, um, it's throwing those into just a separate map. Um, so in the kind of Marshall on Marshall phases, it knows to uh, search the uh, event for the known types, put those into um, uh, kind of known struct fields and then add anything else it doesn't know about into the kind of extensions map and then just has a, a generic get set like a, a map uh, directly on the cloud event that allows you to get to those um, extra extension properties. <clears throat> So I guess a question from my end, are we imagining that the SDK is not only used for generating events and sending them to uh, the HTTP protocol, but also for doing the unmarshalling from the HTTP, uh, like whatever the native HTTP implementation is to a cloud event again? That's what I was kind of thinking and I wanted to just learn about Nick's use case um, to see to see how, how he, what, what he was doing with the SDK. and as to whether or not this should be a priority. It, it kind of seems like it, it is a priority, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. I just, I think it's the first time potentially it's been brought up as a use case, which certainly makes a lot of sense. I think most of the time we've been focused on the client side of actually submitting the event to the, um, uh, to the HTTP protocol. Well, we have this here as our second initiative, assembling cloud events for various transports. Um, so this is sort of covered and it's spec'd out in, or it's prioritized in version 0 0.2. Um, you know, perhaps we could bump it up to version 0 0.1. It's my general opinion that, you know, the people who are doing, working on these things voluntarily, um, can kind of move at their own pace. And if they can get further along and support some of these later stage features, I think, I think that's totally fine. I think perhaps the best thing we can do here as you know, uh, to do the when we do these uh, SDK check-ins, is just to kind of align on the design overall and make sure we're moving in a uniform direction. Sure, makes sense. Yeah, Austin, uh, related question: uh, Is the scope also include uh, converting the uh, provider-specific event into a cloud event to be published to the Bing Gateway or even Grid? Yes, that's something that. Um, that's very, that's very interesting. And I know that we've discussed it. Yeah, here we go. Um, so this is actually pushed out to our, our fourth biggest priority and that's transforming existing events into cloud events via transformation mappings. Um, and yeah, I, I think there's a lot of interest in this and again, just an opinion and gut feeling. But if, mm -hmm. if we made this really easy to convert stuff like S3 events or Stripe webhooks or GitHub webhooks into cloud events, it would um, greatly help this ecosystem. But I, again, I, I think that anyone who's working on these can move at their own pace. And, um, you know, just as long as, you know, we kind of have some agreement or some general acknowledgement as to, as to how this stuff is actually going to work within the SDKs at the end of the day. So the experience when you switch languages is, is not totally different. I'm just curious if, is number four meant to be a core uh, implementation or does uh, four really fit into five? <clears throat> I think a lot of stuff could fit into five, in my opinion. Perhaps, perhaps maybe some of these things too. Um, but I mean, I'm I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess the way I kind of would imagine is, is at least like whatever is called out in the core uh, spec for protocol purposes like HTTP, MPQ, et cetera. Um, I think that would make sense to have a, a core implementation for uh, and that the, the SDK would support those out of the box. But when we start getting into things like you know, converting uh, you know, a specific providers events, that really starts to make sense to me to, to leave it as an extension instead. Yeah. The reason why I was suggesting that this could be addressed as extension is just because these things have their own specifications and they're not like hard coded into the cloud event specification itself. There's a cloud events HTTP specification and this has its own versioning. And I was, I was thinking that perhaps we could support these via extensions just as a way to get around the versioning issue. Um, however, it's going to be difficult because these things, I think 
these specifications are binded to specific cloud event specifications. So perhaps that won't work. Right, exactly. And there, there's also the side of, I think you, you want to at least provide a fair amount of usefulness out of the box for the SDK without having to do yep, yep. too much configuration. Um, but I mean, there's also this side of bloat too. Like, do you want an SDK that has, you know, every one of these things implemented and then that could result in bloat. So it's, it's got pros and cons both directions. Doug, do you have any thoughts on that, uh, um, on, this, on this issue with also specific regards to versioning? Hey, Doug, if you're there, you're on, you're on mute. Okay, maybe he's not there. Um, Nick, uh, just curious, did you think about the versioning concerns at all when you started building out some of, uh, some of this, just for the HTTP spec? Um, so there is one thing that I've kind of been considering, and that's um, in the case that uh, the, this SDK is going to be used in, in kind of a middleware capacity, mm -hmm. um, when it gets you know, let's say version 0 0.2 of the spec, the, uh, the actual cloud event spec, um, we get, we're compatible with um, 1.0, but we're also supposed to be able to at least pass through the 0 0.1 stuff. The, I guess the question for me then is um, kind of in doing that, what version of, what version do we say the new event that I, you know, as a pass through, um, uh, what what version of the event is that? Um, I would assume it'd be whatever um, was the one that came in. I think it would just have to have very hard rules about uh, uh, when the the spec has breaking changes. We can kind of essentially have to assume, well, this is too high of a version. I can't uh, pass do a pass through with it. Um, mm. So that's the only kind of major thing that I thought about in terms of versioning these uh, is the question of when we're passing through stuff that is a higher version than that, than what we know about uh, um, kind of what are the limits on that. Mm. Um, but and that has, has, and that has backwards compatibility concerns as well. Right. Right. Uh, and that's, no, yeah, you, we're probably going to get a lot more older events. Um, then, then perhaps events that are newer than the SDK, although I'm not sure it's highly dependent on the use case. Right, then whoever's updating the SDK. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky one. It, I, mean, well, I think we talked about a little bit about this before too. I mean, uh, you, can spe you can specify um, a, obviously the version of, of the protocol that you're trying to adhere to inside of the SDK, but I think in reality, um, it's really, you, I mean, you may be trying to deliver to multiple different sources and you may want it to be able to kind of toggle on demand. I almost feel that the version of the protocol that's trying to adhere to should really be able to be retrieved from uh, the HTTP protocol on its own. And then the SDK can make some decisions about how it's meant to deliver that event to it. Mm hmm Okay. Um, well, all right. We we still have some. It sounds like we have some major ver versioning concerns. We should probably propose a few solutions, or at least clarify the problem to the working group, um, so they could advise. Because we do have a lot of moving parts here. It might be worth maybe generating a set of use cases from the SDK's perspective, such as delivering to a uh, and you know, an HTTP endpoint where it does not know the protocol, uh, delivering to multiple different versions you know, of the protocol. Um, yeah, just you're kind of walking through what we potentially see the, the combinations of these cases are, and then we could use that as a, to open up um, uh, an issue in, in the actual uh, cloud event spec repo. Mm -hmm. In the situation where the cloud events SDK is publishing to some type of uh, destination that doesn't support the protocol, 
is that is that do you think that would be a common use case no no it's not that it doesn't support the protocol it's that it doesn't know which version of the protocol it adheres to so imagine like let's say i wrote you know uh, a library that people can use mm -hmm. um and you can configure the HTTP endpoint where that cloud event is going to be delivered, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily, the, the library itself doesn't know which version to use out of the box, right? It would be based upon the, that, like the endpoint that actually gets configured. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay. Okay. Uh, Drafting out some use cases is a great is a great suggestion, and it'll help us clarify a lot of the things that we need to be concerned with. <clears throat> um, Brian, do you have any kind of simple simple solutions uh, off the top of your head for for ways we could move forward on this right now with a just the basic MVP design? Mm, I have to think about it a little bit. Um, I'm happy to to draft up. Uh, some some use cases in this doc uh, that we could potentially review in the you know, the next call or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and then I can spend a little bit of time thinking on what some basic solutions might be. You know, um, I, I think it, it, mainly though, I think this is definitely an issue that it's not just an SDK issue. This is certain potentially certainly a uh, protocol issue as well, mm -hmm. uh, and it may be worth surfacing that to the larger group. Yeah, that's what this. That's what these issues sound like mostly. Um, and it's good that we're running into these and, um, because everybody needs to be aware of these. Okay. Br Brian, if you could draft out a couple of those, just put them, if you could put them here in the, in the next steps section somewhere. Sure thing. That'd be great. Awesome. Thank you. And then as far as what we can actually tackle today, it sounds like we could still do, some of this like basic instantiation um defining getters and setters um <clears throat> what else can we do mocking up cloud events for testing we kind of threw this out there we're not sure all of what that entails um although i will say from the serverless framework's perspective being able to easily mock events and uh design tests around them is would be would be super valuable <clears throat> um, how about the extensions design? Uh, perhaps we should chat about this um, a bit because this could be something that we can make progress on right away too. Uh, the way we have been talking about it, at least the way we talked about it a while ago at Serverless Inc. is it's, these extensions are almost like middleware for the Cloud Events SDK. Um, and that when data comes into, you know, when you assemble a cloud event, um, or at least when you're, when you're publishing a cloud event, uh, there should be extra code modules that you could require in and load within the SDK to consistently add metadata, um, as well as do a handful of other things. So the, the extensions experience in the SDK may not add metadata. It may or may not. Um, but it could also add functionality to the SDK. Um, and we're interested in this because we have a middleware product. We have the event gateway and we'd like to build an extension that allows people to easily just publish events via the cloud events SDK, um, by simply adding in our extension. Um, and if they do that, we'll probably also add some metadata to the cloud events envelope regarding, um, that's, that, that works with the SDK and helps generic, it, it generally dispatch the event and route it. Um, so that's our use case. And um, anyway, so does anyone have any other thoughts on extension design and what this could look like? Awesome, can you hear me now? Hey Doug, yep. Hey, hey sorry about that earlier. Um, yeah, I was, I kind of envisioned this as being sort of like <clears throat> the, the person who, uh, who invokes or sets up the SDK kind of sets up a list of handlers for inbound and outbound uh, processing of the event. And then as you said, it can do whatever it wants to with the event, whether it's to actually modify it as necessary or to do additional processing, it doesn't really matter. It's up to the, the handler uh, definer to define that. But the SDK just to have the, uh, the basic infrastructure to be able to plug in a list of handlers, both inbound and outbound. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
that's generally how I thought about it as well. Uh, Brian, did you have any additional thoughts on this? I mean, I, I agree. I, I think I really compare this to, you know, middleware, uh, you know, similar to kind of middleware that goes into something like Express. Uh, and in reality, you know, uh, I think each handler gets an opportunity to be able to manipulate the event and then passes it to the next uh, middleware in the line. I think that's probably going to be one of the simplest implementations that we can come up with, at least for the JavaScript world. Uh, how that looks in, in the other SDKs, I think, would be a, a different question. Yes. Um, Nick, do, do you have any thoughts on what the expen extension experience should look like for the Go implementation? <clears throat> Excuse me. So what, what you're saying sounds very reasonable, kind of being able to wrap <clears throat> the, uh, the actual kind of send receive in, in a number of uh, middleware layers. Um, I think the uh, one thing that we would want to make sure we do is, is um, have a way of defining which of those um, layers gets priority. Right, so which which one gets, um, you know, if we're going to have one middleware, you know, tweak the payload in, in some way, in another way, tweak it in another perhaps overlapping way, um, uh, there should be some way for, for, for a user to um, uh, have a little bit of control over which of those happens first. Um, but I think otherwise that sounds like a very reasonable uh, approach. Okay. In my experience architecting extensible systems, I've never found a silver bullet solution to how to load all the, all the modules that offer that extensibility in a way that they don't totally conflict. I mean, usually the solution that I've seen is just you, you know, the user can specify the order in which each are loaded, but as far as whether or not they'll all work together very well and not, you know, create conflicts, it's, um, it's always a bit of a challenge. Does anyone have any other thoughts on how we could approach that problem? Okay. Um, and Brian, you were suggesting that the extensions could actually add in transformation support. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking is that uh, the transformations themselves, I mean, whether or not we decide to make transformations uh, a core piece um, versus making it a, you know, an extension, uh, mm -hmm. I think is, is also a, a question, but, um, one, th you know, one thing that could happen obviously is that the, um, the extensions, you know, could have the ability to be able to plug in, you know, transformations and, and those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, I don't know, we, could, we could play around with what, what looks best there as we go through the SDK implementation. Interesting. Okay, great. Um, one question regarding versioning. So <coughs> the extensions are also going to have to be able to deal with versioning and understand which version of the event they are dealing with. Um, I, I mean, I'm guessing that that information will uh, obviously be on the, um, the event itself, but I don't know if there's anything specific that we would need to consider in our extension design for you know, easing that, that concern. Yeah, good point. Uh, definitely another moving part here. <clears throat> hmm. it, it seems like a, a possible solution would be in, you know, allowing you know, perhaps allowing the extensions, of course, to inspect the version on the cloud event itself and also expecting extensions to be designed so that they can handle multiple versions. Because at the end of the day, it sounds like dealing with multiple versions of, of cloud events is, is the inevitable outcome of a lot of this. Yep, totally agree. I think the one thing that I would uh, say is that it is very likely that you might end up dragging in an extension that does not know how to handle uh, the version of the event that is flowing through it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we might want to be able to do is allow for extensions to indicate which versions of the cloud event spec that they handle mm -hmm. so that uh, it can you know, call out just during initialization that, hey, I, you know, I'm incompatible with this type of version. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. 
That's a good suggestion. Um, we're going to surface all these versioning issues on Thursday. So Doug, uh, if you could definitely put us on the agenda to bring these up and get some get some feedback from everybody, that'd be helpful. Yep. Yep, we'll do. Okay. Um, all right, we covered we covered most of this and we surfaced, I think our biggest issue is just in handling versioning. That's the biggest source of uncertainty right now. Um, and it's definitely gonna be a, um, definitely gonna be a blocking issue until we, until we figure that out. And hopefully once we do so, we'll all you know, implement our SDKs in accordance with what we decide. So that should make things a lot easier because at the end of the day, there's a lot of different moving parts. Every single one has versions. Um, and if the SDKs go out and handle this separately, then it's, I think it's only gonna create a bigger mess, at least in my opinion. Um, okay. Uh, so Nick, you are working on the Go SDK right now. And are you, are you comfortable, would you be comfortable with putting that in the Cloud Events uh, organization on GitHub somewhere? Absolutely. Yeah, that is that is a priority for us here is to get that out of currently I have a, a, a PR against Carol's initial commit um, in our uh, dispatch framework GitHub repo. Yep. Uh, but uh, yeah, see, we, we would absolutely want to move that um, into the cloud events SDK repo. Okay. Okay, great. And uh, the Googlers have been pretty quiet on this call. Are, are any of you working on anything with respect to the Cloud Events SDK? Hello, hello. Rachel? Can you hear me? Hey, no. Rachel. I, I can hear you now. Yeah, we're not working on it. Okay. Okay, good to know. All right, I'm going to circle back to uh, Matthias from Red Hat. They're doing the job implementation and then also track down William who's doing the Python implementation. But I think now is a good time to start putting these into the GitHub org somewhere. Um, so everyone knows where to look. And hopefully this will increase engagement from everybody else. Okay, so reviewed priorities and versions, um, checked in an ongoing work. On our end, our, our company wants to focus on the JavaScript version of this. Um, we're also very open and eager to put this into the Cloud Events um, org on GitHub. So just so everyone knows, uh, we discussed getting the GitHub repos on GitHub. Uh, we discussed some of these versioning issues. Uh, we have to raise these within the context of the, uh, the call on Wednesday. Uh, we kind of discussed how extensions will work within the SDKs. Um, you know, for, as for next steps, I propose that we all go out and do an implementation, um, you know, based on the information that we have on the things that we've discussed here. And at the same time, on a parallel path, we try and figure out how to handle the versions um, at the end of the day. And hopefully we can make some progress on that on Thursday. Um, and then we schedule another call just to check in on progress um, and see if any other issues come up uh, and figure out how to move forward from there. That sounds good to me. Okay. Um, hey, hey, Doug, is there anything else we should consider from your perspective on the SDK side? Um, I can't think of anything on hand. No, I think like you got everything pretty well covered. I think the gain the repo place is probably the biggest first step that way people start trying to check in code. Okay. Great, I'm taking down some notes about that. And I will uh, propose a few ideas for that on Thursday, as well as uh, raise these versioning issues. Um, with that, I think, I think we're good to go here. Um, does anyone have any other last comments or questions? Going once, going twice. Okay. All right, well, thanks for joining everyone. Um, we'll sync up again on Thursday and uh, figure out how to resolve some of these issues. Bye everyone. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Take care.